plus an 88. All right, solving quadratic equations by factoring. This is going to be really easy for you because you already know how to factor. We're adding one step in, okay? So the equation is now going to be equal to zero, or it has an equal sign in it. So when we just factored, there's no equal sign, okay? Um, so if I have something like x times y is equal to zero, that means that either x or y or both are zero, okay? If you're multiplying something by zero, that's how you get zero. All right, so one of those things has to be zero, or both of them have to be zero. Don't write down this yellow box, but that's essentially all that is saying, okay? If you're multiplying two things to get zero, one of the two things is zero, or both of them are zero, okay? Solve by factoring. So when we just factor, there is no equal sign. Now we're adding in what's called solving by factoring. Notice there is an equal sign, okay? Um, so the first thing is to set it equal to zero. You always want x squared to be positive. That way you don't have to factor out the negative. It's way less steps, okay? So if I want to keep the x squared positive, I want to keep it on this side of the equation, and I need to move the 5x to the other side. So I am going to add 5x to both sides so that it cancels on this side. I'm also going to move the 24 over, so it's a positive 24, so I will subtract 24 from both sides so that I have zero on the right-hand side. Okay, so always set it equal zero first. Now I have a quadratic and put it in order, descending by exponent like that. And now we just factor tractor, all right, what multiplies to negative 24 and adds to positive 5. Positive 8, good, and negative 3, right? Okay, so that would multiply negative 24, add to positive 5. Okay, great. And that was an easy factoring one where we didn't have to do like the four terms thing, right? We just wrote the answer down. All right, now, basically, either this set of parentheses equals 0 or this set of parentheses equals 0. Okay, what would give me 0 here? Negative 8. What would give me 0 here? Positive 3. I just solved the quadratic, okay? So that means my solutions are negative 8 or 3 because that's what would give me 0 if I plugged them into the equation, okay? Now, technically, these are parabolas, which we're going to do Friday. If you graphed this parabola, negative 8 here, positive 3 here, that's a terrible parabola. Pretend like that looks good, okay? There's a parabola. It crosses the x-axis at negative 8 and positive 3. So the solutions are also the x-intercepts, where it crosses the x-axis, okay? That's what you're solving, just so you know. We'll get to that later, though. For now, just factor and solve, okay? We'll just do the algebra part today. All right, so let's try another one. Negative 48 plus x squared minus 8x. We want to set it equal to 0 and put it in order. You want to keep this positive, or if it's negative, you want to move it to the other side, okay? So I'm going to put the x squared first, and then I need the 8x to move over. So I'm going to add 8x to both sides, and that is my second term. And then I have minus 48, and that all now equals 0. So I said equals 0, okay? And then I factor... Okay, x and x. What multiplies to negative 48 and adds to 8? Ready? Okay, positive 12, good, and negative 4. Great job. All right, so then my solutions are what gives me 0. So what is this solution right here? What is this solution right here? Okay, um, another word for these, all right? So these things right here are called the solutions. They are also called the x-intercepts, okay? They are also called the roots, and they are also called the zeros. <laughs> They're very special, all right? They have lots of names. So if you see any of those, find the solutions, find the x-intercepts, find the roots, find the zeros. It means the same thing, okay? 
Find the roots. Okay. We're going to set it equal to zero. Which thing should I move to the other side? Yeah, we don't like negative x squareds. We definitely want to move that over here so it's positive. Otherwise, you would move it over here. You can have zero on the left side, just so you know, okay? But I want to move this over, so I have positive 4x squared minus 25 equals zero. What is this called? Good, it's a difference of squares. This is the special one, right? Where it's only two terms and they're both perfect squares. What goes here and here? 2x and 2x. What goes here and here? All right. Okay. Now, this little problem, it's kind of hard to just do in your head, right? Maybe you can do it in your head. I don't know. But, like, what gives you zero? It's harder when you have a number in front. So, what you can do is set each piece equal to zero. Because either this is zero or this is zero or both of them are zero. All right, so set 2x plus 5 equals 0, 2x minus 5 equals 0, and just solve it. So I would subtract 5 from both sides. So 2x equals negative 5. Divide by 2. x equals negative 5 halves. And then over here, I would add the 5 to the other side. And I would divide by 2. x equals positive 5 halves. You are allowed to just write x equals plus and minus 5 halves. You are allowed to not show any of that work if you can do it in your head. Just be careful. I always do like opposite of this number divided by this number in my head. Okay? All right. So plus and minus five halves. Okay. What if the factoring has a number in front? Okay. It's already set equal to zero. So that was nice. It's already in order. All right. So now we're going to do what multiplies to be what? negative 12 and adds to be what? All right, what multiplies to negative 12 and adds to negative 1? Good job. Now we write it as four terms, okay? So I'll do the minus 4x and the plus 3x in the middle. <clears throat> Again, the order doesn't matter. You guys are pretty good at this. You've been factoring for a while. All right, factor by grouping. So I'm going to take out the x. That gives me 3x minus 4. And here, what do I take out if there's not, like, Anything to take out? Good. Oh, I'm going to take a positive 1 out because the third term is positive here. So take out a plus 1. And then I have 3x minus 4. All right. What you factored out goes first, x plus 1. And the 3x minus 4 goes second. Okay, so I did the harder factoring. All right. So everyone, what is this solution? Negative 1. Can you do this one in your head? What is it? Positive 4 over 3. Okay, if you don't know, though, set it equal to 0. Add the 4 to the other side. Divide by 3. Positive 4 thirds. Okay? All right. That's it. Let's try some on the, some on the